Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Gleba, the Factorio Space Age Nightmare. I mean, beautiful dream. The dream of nutrients flowing along belts. Um, so, I was working on this a little bit before the stream. I wanted to supply eggs to the network only when we need them, because they're needed for biochambers, and I wanted that to be fully automated. And so what I did is I set up a requester chest that's only enabled if we're lacking biochambers, which makes sense. And then it will request uh, one egg, which is fine. Um, <laughs> just one at a time. And I guess we will have an issue if we run out of these other ingredients that eggs could end up spoiling into monsters. So maybe it's a good idea to have like a couple laser turrets here for just in case. But as long as we don't run out of metals, we should be okay. I guess I could set up an alarm for that if I really was worried about it, but I'll just trust. I'll trust in lasers. In lasers, we trust. Um, so that's that part of the system. And then obviously, once we have enough bio chambers, this will stop requesting them. This will make a couple more and we'll be good to go. So that's set up to work. Although, why is it not working right now? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, and then this guy is supposed to be working and it's not, so we'll figure out why it's not working. So this is reading the, um, we have to read two separate egg signals because what I don't want to do is use up my last egg making bio chambers. And I also can't set this up so that this is further down the line because then those eggs are always going to spoil. I probably should have set up a loop here. How did that happen? Heck. I don't know what that was about. Um, but in any case, we we had a dissenter. So this is separate. We're using separate colors because if we use the same color, they would add together and we'd have a problem. So we're reading from the robo network requests to see if the request for eggs is greater than zero. And separately, I'm reading on this second belt, because if eggs are backed up to here, that means we have enough that I can grab one, right? And this is set to stack size of one. So the reason this isn't working is because it needs to be the green signal. And now it'll put one in there at a time. So there you go. Um... <laughs> You'll be okay, King. Keep at it. Uh, so yeah, this should work. Now, what I don't know is why did we just see an egg spoil? What, what was going on there? What was going on there? That was odd. Was it one in my inventory? I don't think so, because these four have been here for a while. It might have been... I'm, not, I'm really not sure, actually. Is this one not grabbing from the end? I really wish I could like zoom in and enhance. I can't tell. Even turning off alt mode, I still can't really see the... Oh, alt mode doesn't show me the spoilage anymore. I can't tell if that one on the end is getting... spoilt or not. Or if it's grabbing the one from the end. Try to watch more closely. I gotta watch when the inserter grabs. Ah, oh, I didn't see anything. You put eggs in the output. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know what I just did. Don't worry. They'll cycle around fast enough that it shouldn't be a problem. I'm just not sure if that one on the end is spoiling. I think it's grabbing the one from the end. So how did we just see one... Spoil, that's what I'm uncertain of. I have been messing with some stuff, so it's possible it's not something that'll happen again. But I'm also slightly concerned about it. I really wish there was a way to tell which one it's grabbing. If I watch long enough, it, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's pretty small, but in the, the little indicator bar, 
it does look like it's the second egg getting grabbed. So Alor, I think you led me astray. I might need to delete uh, your concrete name. You claim you helped, but I'm, I'm not sure if you did. Because it's actually not grabbing the one on the end, I don't think. I'm kidding, I wouldn't do that. But I do think the one on the end is spoiling slowly. Um, tell the inserter to prefer spoiled. I don't think that works on belts. I think it only works on... Uh, whatchamacallits. I can't think of the word. Um, chests. We can try it. I don't think it works. I think I saw people talking about it not working on belts. Yeah, so I think that one on the top is spoiling. So that means we have to switch this over to being a chest with some eggs. Or potentially, yeah, like a just a different belt arrangement. I don't know what would what would fix it exactly to make the inserter grab from the end. Now, do inserters grab from the end when the when it's coming straight on? I'm actually kind of curious about this behavior now. No, they don't. Interesting. So, how do you make inserters grab the last thing on the belt? Kind of weird that they don't, to be honest. I wonder if there's a way to do it when the belt is saturated. Yeah, that one on the back, I think, is about to spoil. Really wish we could see the spoilage of that one on the back. Hey! Imrek, I, uh, I'll call you Imrek. Uh, thanks for the sub. Welcome, welcome. And da Daz, thanks for the follow. Okay, well, we'll give that a minute, and we'll see if our kills go up in the next five minutes. Because what I want to work on is more rocket fuel. Um, we've got a really tight base here, and not the good kind of tight, but, like tightly knotted in all the wrong ways. So what I'd like to do is clear out some space. Um, I do still want a bunch of accumulators somewhere because um, reasons like lasers. So I do still want some of these guys. And apparently, I just don't have accumulators. So, we'll say no to some of these. All right, and I don't really care about the solar because that wasn't very much. And so, what are we doing here? Well, we need blue circuits for the rocket. We need rocket fuel for the rocket. Iron and copper are flowing. I don't want to touch that. That's all working. So the thing I might want to do is... And Bioflux is flowing pretty well too, which is nice. Hmm. I might want to move the power out of the way, and then I can use this area for... Some rocket fuel production. So maybe, maybe that's what we do. So maybe I have a set of heating towers designed for trashing. And then I have a set of heating towers that use rocket fuel for heating. So that means I need more heating towers. Um, I probably should automate these now that I have the ability to do that. Let's keep adding to our bot mall over here. Um, so, and did I finally fix my blueprint here? I think I did. 
Uh, oh yeah, so I changed this to now, okay. I don't know if you guys have seen the video that I put out, but I put out a video talking about parameterization of this uh, blueprint. And this way, I also mentioned you can set the number of stacks, but the way that you have to do that is you have to request another thing in the requester chest. You could also do a constant combinator. But the problem is that you have to parameterize it to be able to make it a variable number. You can't just have the variable number with the thing itself not being a parameter, which feels weird. Um, but I think that's because it's parameter seven. If I set it to something like Spidertron remotes, it might actually work. I don't know. Caladorn, how's it going? For those who don't know, Caladorn is an awesome streamer. They've been playing a lot of Satisfactory recently. Um, and you need my help with what? What could I possibly help you with? So I need heat pipes. Oh, train interrupts? Well, unfortunately, I haven't messed with trains much yet, so I may not be able to help you. Also, why is this defaulting to seven? Uh, I need to fix this. You need to set up a train interrupt to tell your trains to go to sleep in parking lots. That should be doable. You just have an interrupt that tells them to go there when the other things aren't true. Or, or you have, I think it works if you have the train go to parking lot, go to parking lot twice in the schedule, and then it'll just cycle through that schedule back and forth and then you have your interrupts. So I think I think that works, maybe? I, I really don't know a lot about how the new trains work. But yeah, let's fix this, let's fix this uh, issue here. So right now, this is... Well, it should only be allowed to drive to unload um, if the interrupt was uh, true. So I think that is fine. But yeah, there's no way. The problem here is that all of these items could be potentially requested in a network. So I could do something like a deconstruction planner. Um, and then I think if I set that there, then the seven can be a parameter. But I don't want it to be seven by default. I want it to be one by default. And then we can go higher number of stacks if we want. Yeah, Caladorn, that's really weird. I, I, unfortunately, I really haven't played with the interrupts much. So other than what I just said, I, I don't know even exactly how they work, let alone <laughs> what, what the problem is for your particular thing. Um, so what I want to do here, oh, that's, yeah, we want to change this to one. And yeah, maybe if I change this to be... I wish you could request useless things. I guess I could do like legendary landmines or something that I'm just never going to have. But then the problem is it shows up in the logistic network as missing, which is interesting. <laughs> you were kind of hoping I'd tell you it's a bug. It might be a bug, but... Move 7 to the one from the top, but leave the parameter down bottom and make all the values you're using 10 plus. I don't understand why 10 plus is relevant, Eldo. Um, as long as they're different numbers, the actual number shouldn't matter. But yeah, let me use something like a deconstruction planner. And then that one will be the seven. And now I should be able to take bot mall uh, delete that one. Copy this to see if we screw it up. Call it V3. New contents. Yeah, I know I can't use one, but why Why would I skip to... Oh, you're just saying so we could keep it with a one in it. So I'd use 11 and 12 because that's like one and two. I'm fine with just going out of order here. Um, 
So now the value of one is the one we want to be a variable of X. And that actually goes down here with these things. And the value of seven is the thing that's actually the amount of parameter one that's requested. And so that gets the formula of item one and parameter one. Okay. So I think this now will work. And then we'll have a default of one. stack in the network who knows does this work does this work all right uh paste it and no they also changed this by the way in one of the patches in the last week i don't i didn't notice exactly when it was if there's only one parameter that you're pasting it doesn't require you to like click on the parameter box to set that parameter it just instantly goes into setting that parameter which I think is a great change. Um, so wait, why are we not? See, this is why I'm confused. We have it set as a parameter. Num stacks. Craft. So why is it not asking for the number of stacks when I have it set as a parameter? I clearly don't understand how this all works yet because I was under the impression if you hit parameter it would then ask me for that value when I paste this blueprint but it's not and that's what's confusing me is I shouldn't have to parameterize the thing the value is attached to for the value itself to be a parameter Right? Like if I just, let's just come up with a crazy example. So, or not crazy example, just a simple example is what I mean to say. So let's just say we were requesting one cargo landing pad and I wanted this to be parameterized such that I can change the number one to something, to anything I want it to be. Couldn't I just do that? Yeah, and now it's letting me just set the number. So is it because I turned it into a variable, you can't have a parameter variable in this case? Like, I, I'm confused on what... If I put that to be X, now will it not ask me? No, it still asks me. So what's different about this basic mall blueprint? It should be asking me about what value I want to put here. Is it because there's a formula that is grayed out? That probably wouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter. Is it because this is below it? Does that need to be above it? I don't know. Let's try that. I think that was it. Okay, well that's screwy, but now we're happy. Okay, so now we can change the number of stacks. And the only thing this will do negatively for the base is it will have deconstruction planners requested all over the place but that should be fine uh that's not generally an item you have a lot of in your network so anyway if you want to understand more about what i just did um go watch my video on the parameterization uh what i forget what i named the video something like the best basic uh parameterized bot mall or something um best oh no that's not the right blueprint I, I probably shouldn't have used the word best, but you know, you, you gotta be a little clickbaity when you're a content creator, right? You gotta go, you gotta go a little bit into that. Okay, so one stack of heating pipes is fine. What else do you need? Boilers. So... Uh, we'll do one stack of boilers. We'll do... Uh, boilers require pipes and stone furnaces, so I need stone furnaces. One stack of those. Can I do half a stack? I'm gonna, just for fun, see if I can do half a stack. 0 0.5. I think it, I think it said 0 0.5, not 0 0.5. Yeah, so there's, there's no decimals there. Um. Oh, 
I'll just go to 20 here. All right, so that'll keep things busy. And now my network is going to have... Oh, interesting. It doesn't show up as a valid signal. Even though I'm requesting deconstruction planners, they're not showing up as negatives here. I thought they would. That's actually really cool. So this is a this is a legit workaround then to get a free variable from a requester chest is use deconstruction planners. I was worried that it would be requesting a ton of deconstruction planners and stuff, um, but it's not. So that's great. Uh, did I forget something in my bot mall? Well, I'm not providing stone, so let's fix that. And then... Okay, now we're making those uh, heat towers. I guess we need heat exchangers. So... Let's grab those. And then, anything else? Think now or forever hold your peas. I think we're good. I am gonna let this go to a few more stacks. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do... Hmm... Does the fuel value change as they spoil? Or no, not so much. I actually don't know. I assume it doesn't, but it totally could. Interesting. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is come over here for power. So, Aloy, we're gonna move, move you to maybe. Oh my gosh, the base is too small. You're everywhere. He's everywhere. All right. Um. Put you above the farming patch here. Okay, uh, yeah, so we're gonna bring the belts of whatever it is we're burning, potentially up to two belts of it, over to here. And now, we request heating towers. Oh, here's the Terraria music again. <laughs> Hey, Trad, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna fill in this part. Wait, what is... Oh, copper ore, really? Alright, so the heating towers to trash things need to be separate from the heating towers that might be necessary to make rocket fuel. So we'll need a set of both. And what I'm thinking is we can set it up. So we've got like the trashing towers and the rocket fuel towers. The problem is I don't know how much heat can travel on one pipe, one heat pipe. So it's possible I need two heat pipes for this. I can also access the top here. Uh, like that, so maybe we'll be fine. But, but yeah, that's the that's the strategy there, and then we'll put our heating elements and stuff up here for the heat exchangers. And I'll leave some space for more than four towers for the future. But yeah, it's possible... Oops, there's a weird space there. It's possible I need to do a double row of heat pipes rather than a single for this. I don't, I don't know what the limits are.
I'm glad you've been enjoying the live recordings on YouTube. That's great to hear. It's been a lot of fun. I'm loving Space Age. I will say. Alright, and then the water. Should be able to get connected to anywhere. Craft a few offshore pumps. Now, did I mess up the offshore pump that was pumping water into these? No, okay. Because that water is important, it's going to make the rocket fuel. I cannot forget about that. Some lamps go in here. Alright, and now we're waiting on heat pipes, which... We're having a bit of a copper problem? Tell me more. Yeah, fair enough. We're just not getting enough copper. Okay. Could set up another one of these. Um, uh, maybe I will. Maybe I should connect the molten. There we go. Okay. Bit more copper. Now we're at, what, seven, eight a second? Is that enough? I think it is because LDS isn't using copper plates. It's it's just using the molten copper. So we're not needing copper plates for a ton of stuff. And even the wire is what's getting used for the circuits. So I'm really not using copper plates for much. So that should be fine. Okay, well, this will all get built eventually. And then this will be enough power for 70 megawatts times two. Let's go a little more than that. Oh, do we have enough water? 10 per second. Yeah, we have plenty of water. So let's do enough for 200 megawatts would be this build. One point twenty one gigawatts. All right, and then this is where things get tricky. It's tricky, 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 tricky. Um, because we can only do one belt here, so it's almost like I need. A couple like remerges into what is that? No, thank you. I would like to landfill. Um, yeah, to support two belts of actually deleting stuff, it needs to probably look something like that. What's up, Derpamoo? Welcome, welcome. For those wondering about Crydax's wonderful mods, such as brighter lamps uh, and the custom production UI fixed, which I didn't make custom production UI, but what it does is it makes these uh, wider. So for things like Pyanodons, that's kind of nice because there's just the crafting menus. Right now it's only, what, 10 blocks wide? I think it makes it like 16 or 18 or something. And it also makes your inventory wider. It just helps with the large amounts of stuff. Anyway, I had made a change to make it work with larger inventories that Rygard had helped me with. And then Derpamu fixed it and made it work for Factorio 2.0. So there you go. Thank you to Derpamu for keeping the mods updated. Okay, so now these are the trash things. Is this built yet? No, I can't use this for power until it's done building. It's... The problem is it's using all the heat pipes we're making to produce uh, the heat exchangers. 
Honestly, let's just go to like 10 here. Okay, so that'll take a minute, but that's working. So there's power problems on Gleba getting taken care of. Now let's consider how to make lots of rocket fuel. Um, I like the idea of... Oh, we're not getting rid of spoilage, by the way, right here. That's fine. This thing isn't long for the world. Oh, boom puffs. How I hate you. Uh, so annoying. Um, it's funny that bots can't even remove them without them going boom. Also, yep. Yep, there it is. There's proof that one that that egg on the end keeps spoiling. Because uh, we can see we've taken out one of these guys every so often. There's so many little little problems on Gleba. I love it. I really I'm I'm enjoying this. And the music on Gleba is really nice and peaceful. I feel like Vulcanus is big and epic, but it's not peaceful. Uh, why is this? because we don't need more nutrients, right? Interesting. Okay, well, anywho, uh, what was I gonna do? So we're gonna set up some rocket fuel production. I don't know if four is enough, but we'll start there. We'll make it extendable. Uh, that's the wrong kind of rocket fuel. There it is. A rocket fuel from Jelly. And given how much we're going to need stuff connected, and I probably want to use beacons, I'm just going to use the old trick. We'll connect the water out there. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, any chance there's water nearby? Where's my offshore? Uh, all the way over here. Okay, we'll just use this water. Okay, so there's water connected. You think Fulgora is your favorite music? Fulgora was pretty cool. Also, I know I had talked about this earlier. I don't know if I've even noticed the new music. Um, you know, the, the robot DJ music. I don't think I've really even noticed it at all. So whatever they've done with it is very non-intrusive. done yet? Almost. Wait, where are all, are all the heat pipes going? Because they're not going to... And these don't have heat pipes as an ingredient. Why did I think they did? Oh, the, those do. Those do. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, so these are going to need a lot of jelly. Uh, so I have a couple questions for myself here. One question is, do I want to use efficiency modules? Because then that means we need fewer nutrients. However, the nutrient draw isn't that much. It's like one per second, even for a machine that's using more power. So four nutrients per second is not that hard. So maybe, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, yeah, exactly, Waskily. <laughs> the, uh, we get a lot of nutrients from Bioflux and we already have Bioflux right here. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, so. How about we try prods 
and speeds. Is that gonna be too too intense, or will that work? That's pretty pretty intense. We're talking 12 megawatts, maybe 13. And what are nutrients? I keep forgetting. 500 kilojoules? No, two megajoules. So that's only six per second. So that's fine. And six per second is only like 0.5 bioflux per second. That is so much rocket fuel. Uh, you're right. Wow, that's a lot of rocket fuel. I didn't quite realize. I only made four buildings. It doesn't feel like that much. But yeah, why don't we... We can make things a little... A little more chill. And those each need like half a green belt of jelly. There's so much to do here. Um, so the bioflux. Maybe the bioflux and the nutrients come in on this belt. Bioflux one side, nutrients other. Okay. And then. The jelly comes in on this belt and this belt. What's going on over here? Biter's getting getting a little bitey. Um, so then we've got that. We're feeding in the jelly. And you know what I haven't done is got an output anywhere. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um... create a problem here because of the spacing. I actually need a, a, a space of one here. No, even a space of one doesn't do it. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. I need a space of two. But, it works. I guess I should move these like that. Those both affect three. That affects two and that affects two. Makes them balanced, I think. Not quite, but close enough. Close enough. All right, so then jelly, we need what? Like four, no, two? Guys, I can't do math. Why did I think I needed two green belts for this? I mean, technically I do if I was going at full time. But these basically only need 60, not... For some reason I was thinking half of a green belt. But really it's half of a lane of a green belt that each of these need. Oh my goodness. You know, sometimes I wonder about myself. Alright, back to the original plan. So there's that, and then these are basically enough. So I can just utilize this. 
It's going to be fuel, though. So maybe I have a radar representing heat of the, the heating system, which is still taking five ever. Make these heat pipes. Are they finally getting done? No, we're still putting 30 heat pipes in here first. Okay. Got it. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going to read the heat to the network. And I probably should read the heat closer to... Basically, we output priority left, but this only flows if we need it. No, wait, we're gonna use... This is for rocket fuel, so it will always make more heat. What am I doing? This is heat positive. I don't need any sort of prioritization here. Right. Okay. Um, what about bioflux per second? That could be pro- oh, that is problematic. Uh, uh-oh, 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 what's happening? What's happened to biomash? <gasps> seeds, seeds backed up. Oh, no, 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 that's bad, that's bad. Ooh, that's real bad. Uh-oh, oh god. Oh god, panic, panic. Panic. Nutrients. You run again. Oh, jeez. Okay, that- we haven't- Totally lost everything yet. Yeah, I I even considered it a while back, and I was like, oh, I don't have to worry about that yet, and then I forgot to deal with it. So we need some sort of situation here. Uh, I guess we just say. Seed greater 400. What the easiest way to do this? And then something similar. To this guy. Again, beautiful. Yeah, that could have been bad if I had not noticed that for another couple minutes. That would have been not a good time. And at some point I need to worry about trashing the seeds. Uh, I guess we can just do that in a random heating tower somewhere. This only runs if seeds are greater than, I don't know, 500. Okay. All right, so that'll get rid of seeds. No worries there. Um, <laughs> no. Gonna be jelly, but it's gonna spoil whenever we're not making. Stuff. So this one can just flow past. just go to the burners after.
Uh oh. Oh, we got friends. We got friends and family. Hello, friend. Well, now, wasn't that fun? All right, so. Need some laser turrets. <laughs> mm. Oh, they expanded. I see the problem. All right, so that I was gonna say I was like I thought we were pretty far away from from getting attacked. Oh geez, Just three of these. I need some more laser uh, personal laser defenses. The good news is I'm very fast. I don't really have to fear anything. Except maybe death, if I'm not careful. <laughs> they do do quite a bit of damage. All right. Goodness. Triple stompers, eh? Okay, I'll get rid of you guys while I'm here. All the bases right in one area. Yeah, I really should have farmed up some more personal laser defense on uh, Vulcanus before I came here. I could certainly, especially if I had some more rare shields could consolidate a bit and some better roboports. And don't we have roboport tier two at this point? Yeah, I need to make some of those on Fulgora. Because two of those, especially if they were like uncommon, two uncommon Mark II roboports is plenty. Okay, well that was eventful, but I think we're all, we're all fixed up now. Also, Kyle, or Sile, another Factorio stream you'll have playing in the background while working. It is nice when you can Factorio stream in the background. Um, so, these are going to have spoilage happening, aren't they? Easy way to deal with that is the same way I deal with else. Okay. So now we just need the bioflux and the nutrients. Perfect. I think I'll just use a requester chest for Bioflux again. And just be careful about how we do it. Um, let's see, if we do... Bioflux... Wow, I have a lot of eggs in my inventory. Let's not let all that spoil. Bioflux... 
for. The thing I'm, I'm worried about though here is that We're not going to be constantly making rocket fuel. Rocket fuel will back up. Or should I just not let it back up? But then the problem is we need a lot of heat towers to trash all my extra rocket fuel production. So it's like I don't want rocket fuel to be overly produced. And we want to build up a big stockpile for when I need to launch a lot of rockets. So it's kind of a weird, like... I guess we can just let it produce constantly. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. I do need to get... Uh, you can let it spoil. Yeah, but then it spoils on the belt, and I'd rather set it up so that we don't end up with having to deal with spoilage. Um, that's my hope, anyway. Let me get rid of some egg... Let's see. Okay, so I need some nutrients. This, you do not need that many bioflux in here. So you need to say, read contents, stack size one. You only work if there's less than, what is it, five bioflux for the recipe? Yeah. So it only fills up back up to five bioflux. Yeah. So then we're not just storing a ton of extra bioflux in there. And then... I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think this is actually good. Um, the nutrients are being consumed at a relatively good rate. But are they being consumed fast enough? is the question. Well, and unfortunately, the Jelly Nut... The Great Jelly Nut attack of 2024... I think caused some issues here. I think I might ne just need more Jelly Nut. Just need more jelly nut. Um, mm, need that jelly nut soil. Yeah, I probably should account for spoilage on the on that the nutrient side because nutrients do spoil fast. So. Okay, so there's that, and then let's do landfill to here. crap on the belt that we don't want. I always forget about that. Okay. I don't know if we screwed up the belt or not. Um, yeah, some spoilage on the end of that. And then this one... I 
Alright, so those are still running. And then... Now we need to figure out the nutrient system here. This one... will be only nutrients. And we're reading the contents. So the problem is it reads the same contents from the the like input side of things as the output. So it's really hard to like keep that working right. Maybe we should let these nutrients mostly get emptied out first. So maybe this should only run if actually if nutrients is less than 10. So we'll wait until we've emptied out the nutrients. And then we'll make another batch. So that'll help with the spoilage rate. And then this needs to request more than 20. Okay. Might be okay. Yeah, I probably should just be using bots for more stuff, but and then we're gonna end up with spoilage. Probably from the one on the end here not running. Those nutrients might spoil eventually, but that should be fine. Um, yeah, I think we're okay here. And then these will all run constantly, as, as long as we're getting Ellie Nut, which... Hmm... I think we need some sort of supply here, rather than measuring the belts. Because then it stop there's such a lag time. We might actually need a chest here. Like a buffer chest. And you do spoiled first. of that. And what do they stack to? Uh, stack size 50, so that's 500 more. So we want to re... We want to run this until we have about 700, maybe? I think... This will do what we want, but we'll find out. Alright, we're about to get a large harvest over here. Oh my gosh, we're already an hour into this video. Gleba is consuming me. Gleba is consuming me. Now, the problem here is I need to be able to burn all this fuel. <laughs> this is... This is like 400 megawatts of freaking fuel that we're gonna need to be able to consume. Maybe I just need recyclers. 
Oh, now here's a question. If you jam rocket fuel into a recycler, what happens? Is it is it going to give me back iron plates? Oh, we could get solid fuel on Gleba with, with a very backwards process here. <laughs> That's funny. Um, not that I want solid fuel when I have rocket fuel, but I could do it. So yeah, probably recycling is the easier way to, to delete it. But I should use it for fuel first. This is so confusing. But I also want to have enough for rockets. So there's this weird, like, I want to consume it if we have too much of it. And if we have not enough heat... Um, how do we do this? So in the interest of keeping rocket fuel flowing, we want to delete rocket fuel when we have more than 2,000, I think. Probably a good number. And that gives me enough for quite a few rockets, you know, to like use up that stockpile. Now, the problem is, what if we need the rocket fuel for heat? Then, we don't want to use rocket fuel for rockets, we want to use rocket fuel for power. So, like, we need, like, a weird priority system of, like, if, if power is low, or if heat is getting low, the only place that rocket fuel should go is to power. Then... If we have too much rocket fuel, rocket fuel should go to power. Uh, why don't I want rocket fuel backing up so that none of this stuff spoils? And I just, I just want even flow. I want, I want a nice steady state on Gleba here. We lost a turret. Oh no! Ah! That was good timing. Um, I still haven't fixed this problem, by the way, but whatever. <laughs> we can rack up the kills here on Gleba. Um, okay, so... So let's... Let's throw down a Combinator. And we're gonna we're gonna do some some combinating. So the inserters will enable if the green signal is set to go. You're gonna output the green signal if temperature is low. We will we will call that less than 800. We also could output the green signal if rocket fuel, I guess I can do or here, or rocket fuel, ah, but we're going to need to read the contents of the logistics network here. So if rocket fuel is greater than 2000, we also just want to be smashing that rocket fuel into the heaters. And then, separately, we will have some recycling. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? What are we doing? Uh, and then this runs if rocket fuel, rocket fuel is, uh, Enable if rocket fuel is greater than 2,500. Then we'll just straight up trash it. I don't know if that's fast enough trashing. 
These might need speed modules. Um, there we go. That's plenty. Now, eventually, these are going to back up with solid fuel. So do I need a double chain these? I think I need to double chain these. Like this. Okay. Uh, and then these need to have a rocket fuel quest for, let's we'll say, 100. Keep it simple. All right. Now, why is this not outputting? Oh, it is. Okay. I mean, look, Gleba is silly. What can I say? The whole the whole thing is silly. Like you're gonna waste you're gonna waste something one way or another, and it doesn't cost me anything to run things at city state. It's kind of like satisfactory, right? The resources are infinite, so there's no reason if you don't need the resources for something else. There's no reason to not just throw them into the awesome sink, right? And so, uh, I'm not worried about pollution. We'll we'll make we'll make laser laser turret walls or something eventually. Are laser turrets do, or do I need rocket turret? I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't love I don't love the enemies on Glaive. To be honest, I mean, you guys know me. I'm not the biggest fan of fighters in the first place. But the enemies on Glaive having expansion, I feel like, is kind of annoying. Cause then it's like, well, now you really gotta do the protect all your stuff game. Yeah, the lightning gun does seem pretty cool. Okay, so this is heating up. Um, output of 40 each. That's 160. I need another one here. So there's 200. Artillery. Yeah, artillery is the solution. And upgraded radars, I guess. Yeah, when I said wall, I meant a wall of laser turrets. <laughs> Not a literal wall. Uh, what are they called? Striders? No. Strafers? I just want to see what they're... Their range is 22. Their range does go up. So... 22 versus laser turrets... Or 24. Okay, so we're gonna need uncommon... laser turrets to outrange the mediums, and then probably need rares or even epics to outrange the larges once we get to those. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, we should probably call it an episode here, because uh, we're an hour and eight minutes. I'm going to keep streaming, so if you're here live, don't go anywhere. But as far as the episode for future YouTube recording purposes, we will call it. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.